We're going to talk to now Bespoke Bars, um, who are our resident people at Torm for lovely gins and meads and lovely things to drink around our campfire and take home and think about our days at reenactment. So is Richard in, is Richard there, Mel? Right, I'm going to start off with a quick update of where we are and then at the end I will give you a quick the, as, I, as Mel put it, the idiot's guide, how to do a living history beer, a one day beer. OK, um, we were hoping today that we might actually have got out and been working for Easter until the lovely Welsh government, Mr. Drake, was decided to put a slap on that. So we now, like everybody else, are waiting, waiting and hoping to go. Um, we will hopefully be back out maybe sometime in May. This will be from Mon Castle, which where we are at the moment, building a medieval tavern. Um, the tavern will be there as part of an ongoing process. The um, Nigel who owns from Mon Castle has also built four medieval shops to be used, to be let out to people. And there are going to be more built for next year. It's part of an ongoing project for the medieval village. So that's something good that will be going on for the new year. We've also got coming up our first event, proper event out of lockdown, will be Glastonbury Medieval uh, Fair, 26th, 27th of June, which obviously will be just after what we hope will be Torm. Um, we're praying, keeping fingers crossed everything. Uh, there are still a few spaces. If traders are interested, um, talk to me. We'll see what we can do. Um, we have also got, I've got a crib sheet down here because last time round, I forgot a load of stuff. But there is a crib sheet there, even though you can't see it because it's white. Uh, um, uh, what have I got on there? Da, 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 da. Uh, Fond Mom will be looking more like for 2022 for bigger events. Um, the Welsh Government said today they're not looking at really unlocking probably at all this summer. So it'll be small events, but there will be stuff happening there. We've also got some C or not or a C or not event, and then we'll go into winter, um, obviously November Torm. For November Torm, one of our big projects, it's 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 way life is. When you've got time, you, you can't do things because it's locked down. When we'll be free, we won't really have time. But we're going to be looking at doing or making historic beers. Um, a medieval through to 18th century. So what we want to do is produce a pack that will give you a flavour and a taste of beers through the ages. It's something we've long wanted to do and it's something we've got a great interest in along with as I mentioned in December we are going to produce our own gin as well. So we will hopefully we are crossing everything it means I've got I'm going to have to go and spend a whole weekend gin tasting just to get the right flavours but we're hoping we'll have a staggered gin for November. Um, that's my personal little baby that we're, we're really hoping for. Um, we will, they're just, they, they've still got it. We will also have the 30th anniversary mead that we had produced. We will have that to bring hopefully to the June form for anybody that would want any of that. Um, we're working quite closely now with the people that make that Y Valley Meadery um, and we're going to be using their brewery to make our beer. Our web shop is currently open again. The links are in virtual form. Um, Mel, Mel has just put it up. It, it's really great. I, sort of like I've, I've got the media side is just telling me what I should and shouldn't be doing. So that's where we are at the moment. That's what we're doing. Now to the really exciting bit, which is the how you can make beer in one day and really impress all the people that come and watch you around, around um, your living history encampments. Now. I've done this quite a few times. I did it a few times at Fonmon last summer and I've done it on um, Sea or Not Living History Camps. It's drinkable. I haven't killed anybody yet. So it's all good. So first of all, you will take your cauldron, which you can't see. Oh, you can just about see. It's a small cauldron because it'll be small beer. Okay, so you fill your cauldron with water, start to get it boiling, then you add your barley malt, a barley mash, which is basically, it's barley that has been put on a heated floor, 
turned over several times and then allowed to sprout a bit. Now, obviously, you're not going to have the facility to do that. You're not going to have the time to do that. If you want, I can supply you with the malt and everything else that you need. So literally, you put that into the boiling water, you'll have porridge. It looks like porridge. It will even at point smell like porridge. If you want, at this point, you can add just ordinary oats to it, which will give you a wheat beer type flavour to it. Once that's on, you allow that to a rolling boil, 40, 45 minutes. Um, it will look more and more like porridge. Try not to boil the water off. I've done it. And you end up with a mush in the bottom of the cauldron. Not very nice. Once that's done, decant that into a nice, very nice um, Trinity pottery pot. Green on, green on green screen doesn't really work, work well. Just decant it through muslin to sort of like get all the muck and everything out. Leave that, let it cool down. I said blood temperature. Mel said nobody knows what blood temperature is. So I said, dip your elbow in it. Like you do with a you know for a baby's bath or whatever. Um, I was also told that's not very hygienic, but it's medieval. Nobody cares. Um, once it reaches blood temperature, baby's bath temperature, then you can add the active ingredient, the yeast. Um, I have no idea what the exact measurement is for the yeast. I've never done it. I just throw it in, um, tablespoonful, teaspoonful, see what will happen. Thing then is to do is to cover it over. Put it in a dark place and forget about it. Now, if you're really lucky, within a couple of hours, you'll be able to drink it. It'll be about 10, 11 percent. So it's really good for you. Um, what you do then, don't throw away the malt that you've used. If you're on a two, three day weekend, you can use it again. Second, wood, second wash through will give you your everyday beer. The first one is a high beer. Second one is your everyday beer. If you wash it through again, you've then got your ordinary small ale. You've got your breakfast beer. It'll be around about one, two percent. So it does work. Um, I know because I've tried it. You could also, if you're feeling really adventurous, don't use yeast. In the summertime, go and fertile around the hedgerows. See what you can find. The best one is elderflower. If you've got a flowering elderflower tree, put that in. It'll be the natural yeast. It'll activate it and you'll have a really nice elderflower beer. It, it'll smell slightly bready, slightly apple-y, um, but it works. The other thing you can do with it is if you've got a bread oven and you're making bread on the camp, use the beer to make the bread. You then have a, a traditional sort of like medieval beer bread. It didn't know how it worked. If you put it in with some rough flour, you'll get like the... the, the um, bread trencher sort of thing it's wonderful you can take it on the battlefield if you throw it at somebody it is so hard it will kill them it's pretty lethal stuff but it's fun um every time i've done it the smell coming off the cauldron it, it attracts people towards you they want to know what you're doing um history of brewing is something i enjoy so if you want to know more ask me i've uh, that is oh, a sip through time. That's my Bible. It was by Cindy Renfrew, and I can't remember the bookseller's name at Tom now. Um, but I got this from Tom. <laughs> so um, is it Phil? I I'll find out and I'll put it on. But um, I, I find it really enjoyable. When I first started doing reenacting, I did cooking. I didn't fight. I find that more, you know, uh, no, Chantelle, it's not liable to explode at all. <laughs> I've never, I've never had one explode yet. Um, so, so, long, so long as you're careful, and if you put it in a dark place away from anybody, it'll, it'll be fine. But try it. You, you might be pleasantly surprised that you get something that is wonderfully drinkable, um, when I did it two years ago for property for the sealed knot, they were actually drinking it before they went on as they were mustering ready to go into battle. So if you have any questions, I think now is your time. I probably exhausted things. Um, yes, the picture, be, the picture behind me is a fair example of what I look like when I am doing this. Um, so, and if anybody wants to know more, 
obviously, if people want Malt to do stuff in living history and we are going for June, if you let me know in advance, I will make sure that I have got Malt as part of what we have to sell so that you can take it away. It lasts quite a long while and there are some very, very nice original ones, um, original malt, malt out there that can be used. The other side of it, at Fonmon, the farmer who rents some of the land is actually making, it lasts quite a while, <laughs> it, will, it, 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 will, it will last a while, so don't worry, um, six, seven months easily. But I, I, I do know somebody that is actually going to be making the malt and doing the drying process themselves. So we will actually have a whole process where we will know every inch of the way from the person that grows it to the person that makes it to the person that sells it. So we will actually become a producer as well. Um, uh, that's something I've, I've, I've long wanted to do. We always buy our produce and sell it. So for me personally, to be able to actually make it to sell it's a it's a bit of an out, like ambition that we have aimed for, and now we're looking forward to be able to do. <laughs> That's common. Can you put one of the barrels behind you? <laughs> I would, Simon. I only wish I could. I don't. Unless somebody wants to provide me with a big <laughs> enough cauldron. Um, funny enough, at Fonmon there is a brew house attached <laughs> to the castle, but it's got rare bats in it, and I can't use it. It's really annoying. <laughs> so there you go, folks. A um, little bit of what we do, where we are, and something fun to do on living history. That's lovely, Richard. And that's good that you're going to bring some supplies for people. It's in addition to living history now, isn't it? A living history camp, if somebody could brew on camp. Yeah, I mean, so because of what we could and couldn't do last year at Fonmon, that's what we did. We did we did a little bit of living history and a little bit of selling, but we did, we did cheese making, um, the ladies did a little bit of weaving, we did beer making and we did bread making. So it all, it all, it all enhances what, what you can do. Um, I just think it makes it more interactive and real. So. And you're taking uh, traders, aren't you? You're looking for some traders possibly for that then? Um, for, more so for Glastonbury. At the moment, we're not, because Mark Drakeford hasn't been very clear for Wales what's going on, we're waiting to see. We, we, we're hoping the 20th, but we'll open it up slowly. Um, because we've only, we, before, before shops that are there have already been let out for the initial bit, but we, it, it'll build out, it, it really will. The idea is to actually make it a focal point for Wales as a reenactment venue. The, 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 the castle has got provenance. It was Margaret Beaufort's mother's residence. Mm -hmm. It was also the residence of Colonel Philip Jones, who was Oliver Cromwell's right-hand man throughout the English Civil War. So it's got a fantastic historical provenance. And if you like books, it has got the most fantastic library that Nigel, the castle owner, wants you to read. I mean, Mel and I have been in there. I I've spent hours just reading sort of like books from the 16th century. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's once it, once it gets it open, again, it it'll be well worth just coming along to see. And if somebody wants to come and have a look for the view to trade in, I'm sure we can sort it out, but you can come and have a look, come and have a have a wander around and chat to me and chat to Ross. So that's great. That's great, Richard. Thank you for doing that for us.